everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Garmin, and this is my podcast about knitting and crocheting and my journey as a full-time knit brand crochet designer. I'll put my social media handles up here on the screen so you can see. And it has been one week longer than I anticipated. I, uh, in the previous episode, I said it would be three weeks because I was taking a holiday but it has actually been four weeks since my last episode. Um, mainly because um, I do a podcast every two weeks and every week that I don't record, I record a video for my Patreon page, which is called Designer Talk. And last week was the Patreon page's turn. So that's why uh, I'm recording a podcast episode this week. I'm sure it doesn't really matter, but I wanted to explain. So I um, actually haven't done a ton of knitting, but I do um, have enough knitting. So um, I'm sure it will be another full episode. But uh, the main thing that I have been making is a secret thing. So can't show you. <laughs> I'm just going to jump right in with the first project. Uh, which are my hand spun and hand knit socks and so this is my second pair of hand spun hand knit socks um, if you've watched my more recent podcast episode you might have seen the um, the yellow pair of hand spun socks that I did um, this is using some fiber by undercover otter uh, which is dyed by Aiden from Amsterdam. Uh, so Undercover Otter, you can find them on uh, Instagram and they have amazing color options. Um, they don't often do fibers, they, they are more into dyeing yarns. But if they have fiber in their store, be sure to check it out. Uh, this one had some nylon content and it was just, I think it was a one-of-a-kind colorway. Just a uh, shaping the sock so it will look less crumpled um so i think it was a one-of-a-kind colorway and um you can see it has gorgeous uh purples and pinks and orange and some red even and it is beautiful and if you're into um spinning videos i have put oh, hair in my mouth I have put a little reel on Instagram, so a little video of me spinning, uh, spinning up this fiber. Um, so you can see the whole process sped up into 30 seconds, which is always really satisfying. And um, I will say that I knit them a little bit too short, so too short in the foot. Which means that if I wear them, that the heel kind of creeps under my foot and that often happens with my socks because I am too impatient so <laughs> I'm trying them on and I think yeah I should put in the heel now and I'm just you know too I can't be fussed to go get a ruler or something to actually measure it because I know I should knit until I have 18 centimeters or 17 centimeters and usually I um, I am too impatient um, but also I don't think that I have blocked these yet so um, I don't think that I have washed these yet at all um, yeah I'm <laughs> I'm not sure. I cannot remember. Uh, I think I was just too enthusiastic when I finished these and I put them on straight away because they also feel as if I've just finished them. So you know when when you finish a knitting project and if you wash it, it becomes much more soft. Um, this one doesn't feel like that yet. And I was thinking maybe it's because Mm, this is hand spun, so it's no, it, it, it wouldn't feel rougher because it is hand spun. But 
maybe if I applied it too uh, too tightly it would feel a little rough on the hands and yeah but I am just going to wash it again and then block it on bigger sock blockers uh, so that hopefully they will stretch the socks out a little bit and then they would fit better I did a very long ribbing on these um, which wasn't actually planned I just I was knitting them from the toe up I had split the yarn into two um, balls of 50 grams and I just thought that at this point uh, I looked at my tiny ball of yarn and I thought, hmm, I might be able to do this much of ribbing. And then it was like double, <laughs> double the amount. So I didn't plan on knitting that much ribbing, but it does feel very nice. And I cast it off with uh, Lori's Twisty Bind Off, which you can find here on YouTube. Lori with L-O-R-I, uh, Twisty Bind Off. And it is my new favorite bind off for knitting because it doesn't flare as much as uh, Jeannie's surprisingly stretchy bind off and uh, it looks really nice. So these socks are a success um, but yes I am going to wash them again to see if they will loosen up a little bit more. And talking about socks I think I will just uh, continue on to my other sock project which I haven't made a ton of progress on, but I do have a ton to talk about. So uh, these are my wild strawberry socks. And I finished these, but these ones were already finished um, last episode. Um, and I'm just going to show you the texture pattern. It is just gorgeous texture and I will put a picture up on the screen of my original wild strawberry socks as they are a color work design and um, so in the color work design you also have this texture this this part of my hair is really <laughs> ah, messing with me okay I think I'm fine. So in the color work you also have this texture but then it looks totally different and because I have worn those color work socks a ton and I made them with a uh, single ply yarn um, the colors are kind of blending together so I can't really show those anymore um, so I knitted up this little swatch which you probably saw in the intro so You can kind of get an idea of what the socks will look like, or at least what the pattern looks like in color work. And if you put it next to the solid color version, I think it is quite striking the, um, the difference. And um, I think the color work almost looks like this uh, houndstooth pattern. Do you know that pattern? It's like uh, it's like squares if you look from afar, but if you look really closely, they're like lightning bolts or something. Usually in black and white, so houndstooth. And this kind of reminds me of that. Um, yeah, so I really, really like this. Um, I knit this little puffy sample in Schepies Metropolis. This is Marseille, which I think is uh, color 19, and Depok, which is 26, and they are my all-time favorite combo. I cannot get enough of this, um, of this dark foresty army green and this minty green. I think it is the perfect combination, and I love it to death. Um, so, Yes. <laughs> and now my progress. I was like, what am I going to, to tell you? So um, we went on a little trip to Switzerland. My uh, aunt was getting married and it was um, wonderful that we could attend because up until last minute we were not sure and we had already booked all of the hotels and yeah, we were not sure if we uh, would need to cancel. But then we could go, um, and it was lovely. And of course, I packed 
three or four projects uh, to knit on in the car. I did not Mm, I did not work on it that much in the end. Um, I think I had done about half of the ribbing before I took it, so I only did this part on this project. So I finished the ribbing and then I went on to the textured part and I was smart enough to um, not take the pattern with me. So I kind of had to um, look at my other sock very closely and remember my own pattern <laughs> so I was like hmm <laughs> uh, so that was a bit tricky but I think with a texture pattern like this no one is going to see mistakes anyway uh, so I didn't do a ton on this but uh, I did want to talk about it and knit up this little sample because I do just really love this pattern and uh, this is actually one of my least popular knitting patterns and I want it to be popular <laughs> uh, but I get that you know with the with the sample that I finished uh, I didn't take a ton of great photos so I think that's also why why it didn't uh, perform as um, as well as I thought it would and just as a Quick note, I am knitting this version, so the solid color version, I'm knitting that top down, but the pattern is written for toe up socks. So I have um, done this one with a heel flap and then gusset, but in the pattern you will find instructions for toe up sock with German short row heel as I like my socks uh, and this is also the reason why this sock is going so slowly because I do not like heel flap and gusset um, and I also don't like DPNs but I don't have any other circular needles available in this size so yeah that's why and I also wanted to give you a little backstory oh before I forget this yarn is hand dyed um, and I believe they are now called Mina Dye Works, M-I-N-A Dye Works. Um, and Mina is the mother of Lily who owns Sticks and Cups Yarn Store in Utrecht. I believe I got that correctly, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so this pattern so the wild strawberries socks pattern was inspired by bohus knitting um or bohus stickening i had taken a bohus stickening class years ago at a craft fair and i remember we had to do some homework for this course and um this is up until here is my homework um and bohus stickening is um it is a technique or maybe a knitting style that originated in Sweden in the 1930s. Um, I think it was 1937. And it was uh, in a time where there was just great uh, economical and financial distress, um, Sweden, um, you know, in that time, um, men were the only workers, and um, most workers were uh, working in the granite, um, not farms, <laughs> quarries, in the granite quarries, and um, some other thing I've forgotten. And uh, because of the World War I, there was some problems, uh, there were problems with the uh, export of uh, granite. And um, then there was a, a depression and it just got harder and harder for the families and they were already very poor. And um, this woman, Emma Jacobsen, who um, was married to the governor of Bohuslän. So Bohuslän is a um, region in Sweden. I think it's, um, it's, <laughs> I always say it's like the bottom left and then I have to, and then I have to think like, how, how do regular people say that? So the um, southwest part, Bohuslän, um, and Emma Jacobson, uh, uh, other women came to her like, okay, how can we help? So, um, 
So blue stickling was kind of invented, uh, created to, um, to be a relief work so that uh, women could also provide income. Um, and what's great is that the income that these women generated was then, um, I want to say spread out, but it's not the correct term, it divided um, between um, uh, other poor families. Um, and this uh, bow stickening, so uh, at the start, so okay, let me backtrack a little bit. What it is known for now is that it is color work mixed with pearl stitches as it just creates a wonderful effect. And let me illustrate that a little bit. So this is, oh, I think I'm holding it upside down. So this pattern is the same as this pattern and it's even the same as this pattern but in uh, here you have no pearl stitches at all here all um, let me see and here some of the um, orange and pink stitches are pearl stitches and here uh, the gray stitches are pearl stitches and um, it just creates, well, wonderful texture and also it just looks completely different every time. Um, and here as well, this is the pattern without any pearl stitches. And then here, uh, I think the, the green stitches are pearl stitches and then here the blue ones. And then it's just amazing how you can transform a pattern by adding pearl stitches. And then up top, I have the wild strawberry pattern. So when uh, so this was the end of my of my um, homework. So this actually, and then I thought, oh, what if I do this? And then I was like, okay. I'm putting this swatch down, I'm casting on a sock, and here we go. Um, so, Boohoo Stickening is now known for um, combining color work with uh, pearl stitches, but at the beginning, um, I think most of the designs did not incorporate pearl stitches yet. Um, if you're interested about uh, bow Stickening, um, there are two episodes now out of Fruity Knitting, <clears throat> which is 112 and 113, and they are interviewing Bernilla uh, Silver, um, sorry, can't, <laughs> can't remember her full uh, surname, Bernilla from uh, Angora Garnet, um, and she produces um, Angora and wool yarns, and um, some of those yarns go into uh, bow stickening kits. Um, so yes, this, uh, this technique, it was created in the 1930s in Sweden. It, uh, got immensely popular, uh, the, the sweaters and hats and, uh, other garments that these women created, they were, they were sold in really high fashion shops. I remember, uh, this movie star Cary Grant, uh, also wearing, um, a sweater and you know a lot of famous people and celebrities they um, uh, they wore bow stickening creations and I think um, it lasted about 30 years so in the in the 60s it ended and then since the 90s there has been a revival of bow stickening uh, where you know, kits and patterns were created for knitters to knit themselves. So in between the 30s and 60s, uh, they were only created to sell the end product and the patterns were kept to the workers. And um, yeah, it's just immensely fascinating to me, uh, not only because this was, you know, women uh, reviving an economy and you know providing work and people seeing for the first time that women's work can also be valuable 
I mean, not only because of that, but also because the patterns are so, so beautiful. And then um, combined with Angora, it can create such a beautiful, hazy uh, effect and almost as if you're seeing the color work through a mist. And um, I think that is also the reason why I chose this uh, single ply yarn for my first uh, socks in uh in in this pattern so so socks isn't really what you would knit with a with bohu's um um technique uh because you know they they made very luxury items and then socks are very you know items that need to be durable and you know they're just worn to death you know so um uh, so in that there is kind of a, a mismatch, but I just loved the the inspiration. I I love this this pattern. So I'm not saying that this is Bohu Stickning. It is just inspired by. Uh, I mean, I think it is only the the original patterns that you can call Bohu Stickning. But uh, I was just very much inspired and. Um, yeah, and I called my socks the wild strawberry socks um, because at the time we had these wild strawberries out in our garden and one of the most popular bow stickling designs is called wild apple um, and I thought that uh, came together quite nicely. Um, so yes, I hope to finally be <laughs> finishing these because these have been on the needle. For a long time and maybe I'll just finish another pair of socks first so I can finish these with circular needles because DPNs yeah <laughs> I cannot work with them and another project that I took with me on our little holiday is um, something that I have since finished uh, and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet <laughs> it is a little purse so a little like toiletry bag um, of Escapius Mighty and this yarn is part uh, Ute, uh, I'm not sure, I think it is spelled the same in English but not pronounced the same so it's J-U-T-E Jute, <laughs> I don't know. So uh, it feels a little bit like um, like a rug. Uh, it feels very durable um, and yeah I thought it would be um, yeah. <laughs> I just had this idea for a bag and I had these two colors of Mighty and I thought that would work amazingly and I wanted to test this out so I sewed a zipper in here See, it works, but uh, I'm not too happy because it is kind of wobbly and I think it's because uh, the knit fabric is kind of stretched so I should have inserted a shorter zipper or you know clipped the zipper to be shorter um, and I think that is what what's making it wobbly um, and also I have found because I have done a few more tries I have found that if you cast off really tightly that it works better so um, yeah but uh, I didn't want to rip it out here because yeah it's a sample so uh, I did the dark blue part in crochet and these are half double crochets uh, that's US terms or in UK terms half trebles um, I just chained a bunch of stitches and then went around with half um, with half trebles and then um, worked in the back loop and then um, here I just started knitting so uh, I picked up one knit stitch for each crochet, crochet stitch and I think that knit stitches are a bit narrower so it kind of it looks like um, the crochet part is wider um, so I think if I were to do this again 
crochet and knitting combined that I need to use a bigger needle for the um, knitting part. But uh, I knit in the in the round up until here, then I cast off these stitches, and then for the remainder I worked in rows, which I then folded and cast off, and then put the zipper in. So, yes. Um, so. <laughs> I want to make this into a pattern, but uh, it still has a long way to go, uh, mainly because I need to rethink the whole construction, because um, having the fabric in the round already and then having to sew in the zipper, that was unnecessarily difficult. And I think it would be much easier if I would have the back and front of the bag separate and that I would sew them onto the zipper you know where while they are still flat and then to sew the bag together because that is much easier that way so yeah um, lots of thoughts about this one but yeah it's it's just it's a prototype and I will be rethinking this I think I won't at the crochet with the finished item um, but it was it was a nice experiment to try so another project finished and it, it will probably be a while before you will see me working on the actual sample um, because I have a lot more things to do and I don't want to overwhelm myself but at the same time I could not resist just casting on this project and giving it a try. All right, on to some spinning. So I'm not sure if I actually have progress on the mohair camel merino blend spin, uh, but here it is. So I took it off the wheel because I'm spinning something else at the moment. And this is, um, so if you haven't seen my most recent episodes, I am blending some mohair fiber with camel and merino because the mohair, well, the mohair is already blended with Shetland wool and I got it from this um, Dutch store called Wools of Holland. Um, I actually believe it's their own flock of sheep, but I might be wrong. Um, I just... I love this company and I just, uh, yeah, they, they have really fun blends and uh, I bought some sock yarn from them with seaweed in it, so I finally kicked that up, so uh, I'm hoping to give that a try soon. So the, the mohair in Shetland turned out to be a little bit too scratchy, um, so I am blending it with merino and camel. Um, and I'm using some animal fur combs for that. And this is uh, the single on my bobbin so far. And um, so I still have a lot to spin. Um, and I mean, this is just half of what I want to spin on the first bobbin. And then I need to spin the second bobbin. And I think I just want to ply two of this same bobbins together and not marl it with another fiber, but I might, I might. Uh, and then the other fiber that I've been spinning, and that is now on my spinning wheel, and I show you a close-up in a moment, is my recycled yarn. So my scrap yarn turned fiber and I have this lovely bowl right here, and oh my god, look, it's a rainbow in a bowl, a rainbow. <laughs> um, and <laughs> okay, this is why I stopped spinning last time because it was just not working. But um, overall, it is good to spin. Uh, but I will say it's a little more, a little bit more uh, difficult because the fibers tend to be a little bit shorter. Um, so I have to be really careful not to break it. Uh, so I have 
just really small bits. If you recall from last time, um, I had them all sorted by color and they were like quite, quite a sizable chunk per color. And then I divided those up in very small pieces and I added them together to make this kind of rainbow sausage uh, <laughs> or snake, whatever. And uh, and then I spun it and I am going to insert some footage here uh, on the screen uh, of the bobbin, what it looks like right now. So you can see a whole uh, cacophony of colors and uh, it looks like a Fruit Loop cereal bowl. Um, or at least I imagine because I've actually never seen Fruit Loop cereal in real life. But um, from what I've seen on American TV shows and whatnot. It seems pretty similar in color. So um, I actually, I really, really want to spin this up. And then I am not sure if I will ply it or if I will keep it as a single. Uh, I think it will be prettiest if I keep it as a single. And also I will have the most yardage unless I ply it with a different fiber uh, but I think it will be prettiest as a single because if I um, if I divide the bobbin in half and then ply it with itself it will be even more color and I think they won't really um, show up I think it will um, be very muddled if you knit it because like uh, if you have a 10 centimeter piece of yarn that will knit up to like three stitches. So already one bit of color uh, will show up as just a few stitches on knitting. And I think if I were to ply this, um, this yarn together, then it would just be muddled and too many colors uh, all at once. So yes, I think I'm going to keep it as a single. Um, and I have spun a single before. It's right there. Let me just grab it. So this is one of my hand spun yarns that I have kept as a single ply. And it is strong enough, definitely. Uh, but you do need to do some prepping. So... You can, you can look up all tons of information and videos on this topic, but uh, basically what you want to do is that you want to, um, I, want to I want to say scare the yarn, um, yeah, kind of like you do with eggs, like you take it uh, from the boiling water and then um, in really cold water so that the shell comes off uh, really easily. You do that same process with um, with single ply yarn. So you want to have two pots of water, one being really hot, one being really cold, and you just take it from the one to the other and repeat it a couple times. And also, um, so this is then when you still have it in a skein, and then when it, when it is wet, you kind of thwack it on a hard surface on a table or on a wall. Uh, I think it is actually called thwacking. <laughs> So T H W A A C K, yeah. Um, it might be called something else, but um, yeah. So you basically, what that does is uh, it causes the fibers to relax, um, so that it won't curl up anymore. Usually when when you have a single. So let me just take you back a little bit because otherwise this won't make sense. Uh, when, you, uh, when you spin yarn, you spin a single first and you spin this counterclockwise. Then you spin a second bobbin of singles counterclockwise. My hair is really... Uh, 
bothering me today. Uh, and then if you ply them together, so if you take the two single strands together, you ply them clockwise. Um, maybe it's the other way around, but <laughs> the, the idea is that it goes in different directions. And then uh, when you have the plied yarns, you will have the both directions and they will balance each other out. But when you have a single yarn, you still have that much tension in just one direction. Um, and now it hangs really nicely. But uh, if I did not prepare it with, um, with a thwacking and the hot and cold baths, then it would curl up um, sometimes you still get this with store-bought yarns. You might have already experienced this, that if you're just knitting from a ball and then uh, it will curl, uh, you know, the yarn from your ball will, will curl and then that yarn has not been balanced um, enough. So, long story short, yes, I think I'm going to leave it as a single ply yarn. Um, yes, <laughs> again, I have come to the conclusion that I can talk a lot. Uh, one last thing though that I want to share with you and that is quite exciting is that there is a new book coming out which is called The Sock Knitting Bible and it is coming out in November um, by David and Charles uh, Books. And uh, this book has been authored by Lynn Rowe from The Wool Nest. And Lynn has asked me to contribute a design to this issue, so uh, to this book. And um, so her book, The Sock Knitting Bible, she wanted it to be a collection of patterns of basically everything you need to know about socks. So there are different uh, cast off methods in there, there are different heels in there, different styles of socks. You can do very simple to very complicated. And um, I think it is a beautiful collection. I haven't seen all of the patterns yet, but just uh, knowing a couple of the designers' names, I know it is going to be superb. Um, and Lynn, of course, is a fantastic designer as well. Um, and with me being totally obsessed with color work socks um, at the moment, I mean, for the past two years and still, uh, so I have contributed a colorwork sock design and I have the swatch here. Uh, in a minute I will also put a picture up on the screen and of the uh, cover of the book. Uh, but this is the swatch that I made and this is also with Scapies Metropolis, which is soon, you know, becoming my all-time favorite sock yarn. Um, and I, uh, I'm... I knew I wanted to do more than just two colors, uh, but still two colors each row. And I started off with this, but then it reminded me of this 70s curtain um, from my <clears throat> from my grandpa's uh, from my grandparents' house where I used to stay as a kid. And um, these curtains, ugh, I would fall asleep just looking at them and then kind of the the pattern just going round and round in circles before my eyes and you know the these weren't the exact same colors the curtain was um as a matter of fact i think orange and brown very retro very 70s uh but this just reminded me of that too much and also with the white background i started to see eyes like cat eyes or and i was like no I can't do this anymore, so uh, I went on a more Fair Isle route. So it's not traditional Fair Isle, but um, if you know a little bit about Fair Isle, you will know that there are XO patterns um, in most of the Fair Isle patterns. And so this is kind of a modern twist on that. So you have the, the X here, and then the O and it kind of repeats itself like this and the pattern repeat is is this uh, but it just it flows nicely together and yeah once i had that um i knew i wanted to do this pattern 
uh, I tried it in a different color combination. I think just with the with the colors inverted. But um, I decided that I liked this one best. And um, yeah, I mean, if I do say so myself, the socks are beautiful. I think they might be the most beautiful socks I ever made. And I will put a picture up on the screen right now of um, some of the um, pictures that I took before I sent the socks off to the publisher. And I will show the cover as well of the Socknetic Bible. And I'm so, so honored that Lynn uh, put my my design on the cover as well. I, I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, I was scrolling uh, through Instagram the day before yesterday and I saw Lynn's photo and I just, <gasps> I gasped. And my boyfriend asked, is everything okay? <laughs> and I was like, yes, look at this. And he was like, okay. A nice book of course he didn't recognize my socks so i explained to him that um that that was my design on the cover and he was like oh my god that's amazing uh and yeah i'm really very very happy so um very very pleased um so thank you a lot lynn and uh i can't wait for the book to come out in november and I think I will also be purchasing some of the books wholesale. Um, the publisher has already contacted me about that. So um, kind of to gauge interest, would you be interested <laughs> in uh, in buying one of those books? I mean, I could open up a pre-order perhaps and then just uh, order those books from them. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to order in quantities of... 50 or whatever uh, but I might be opening up a pre-order uh, but you know just let me know in the comments if you already know yes I want that book and I would rather buy it from you directly because you're in the Netherlands or I, I don't know closer to me than to Lynn in the UK um, so yeah that would be very helpful um, I'm just really really excited and oh Another thing that is happening also in November, uh, so from October 30th to November 2nd, there is a knitting and crochet cruise happening here in the Netherlands. And um, so this is basically only for the duchies um, because, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's in the Netherlands and right now the travel restrictions, I'm, I'm not sure if any people from other countries could come. And my local yarn store, Wool of Fame, they are organizing this yarn cruise, so this uh, knitting and crochet cruise, um, in Arnhem and Nijmegen. Uh, we are departing from Arnhem. But uh, Wool of Fame is actually in Maasbracht, which is very close to me. It's in Limburg here. And... Um, Having Dutch words in my sentences really messes up <laughs> my English. Um, but they are organizing a cruise and it's going to be four days long. It's going to be really, really fun. I'm going to be there with my mom. Um, I think there are already about 50 people coming. I think they have space for about up to 70, but I'm not sure. There are still places available, um, but they only have two person huts still available now. Um, so we sleep on the boat, we eat on the boat. Uh, it's all inclusive. Uh, I believe they even have a swimming pool on the deck, but I'm not sure if the swimming pool will be open. Uh, after all, it's like November, so, and in the Netherlands. Um, but we will be going to a couple cities and doing some sightseeing there. And on the cruise, on the boat, we will have workshops and we will knit together, crochet together. Um, there will be bingo uh, in the evening so you can win prizes. Um, it's just really, really fun. And I have been on one of their cruises before, but that was just like a couple hours, just a day cruise. Um, I haven't been on their XL cruises, which is a couple days. So this will be my first time going on there, but I already know it will be tons of fun. And um, yeah, you can still book. So I just wanted to mention it in case um, people want to 
come with me on the cruise. Um, yeah, I already know it will be lots of fun, so please do check them out. Wall of Fame. Um, and I think that is all for this episode. Plants are all doing fine. This one has some gnats, so little flies. But I feel like I'm in control. Um, yeah, tomatoes in the garden aren't doing that great. They are falling off because of the rain, so they're oversaturated with water. So, yeah, not a great year for my um, vegetables. Also, the zucchinis are not doing great. But, so that is... <laughs> the plant update. Momo is doing great. Uh, I hope you are doing great as well and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, please do let me know what you're knitting or what you're crocheting and I will see you back in two weeks. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye!